In this video, I want to go ahead and discuss some common mistakes that I see students make when they're dealing with logarithms. If you know the answer to this logarithm, you'd be like, how are students making a mistake on this? This is about as easy of a problem that you could possibly do. And you're right, the answer is a simple 72. But students make mistakes on this all the time. And a lot of it just comes into like one, not having the properties memorized, like when are we ever gonna use properties in real life, right? So they're just like, I don't remember them. And there's a ton of properties of logarithms to remember. So it can be easy how this could often be, you know, kind of overlooked. Another time that sometimes make this problem, you know, a little bit more confusing is a lot of times you think about three to the 72nd power, right? And if you were to take three, raise it to the 72nd power, that's gonna be a really, really big number. So you might even think like this problem is not possible. Or you might think that like, oh, three is divisible into 72. So, you know, maybe I could divide them, but don't do that, right? That's not the right way. I think the important thing that I want students to understand, or the reason why students make the mistake is they don't understand what logarithm mean or what logarithms kind of represent. So the way I like to kind of like help you understand why this answer is so quickly, but then how students can avoid making this mistake is just use some like simple numbers. And again, some simple numbers would just be with like the base 10. So in this case, I have logarithm base 10 of 10 squared. All right. The nice thing, we don't need to write base 10, but I'm writing base 10 in there. So therefore you can at least see what we're doing. Now, in this case, when I have 10 raised to a second power, that's a lot easier to compute than three raised to the 72nd power, right? So 10 squared is just going to be 100. So now what I want you to be able to see is like, again, when we're looking at a logarithm, what we're trying to ask ourselves is 10 raised to what number is going to equal to 100, right? And again, sometimes you can just think about this as an exponential equation. That is what this logarithm is asking us. 10, the base, raised to what number, power, our variable x, is going to equal our argument, which is 100. Now, again, we kind of already know the answer. It's easy, right? It's two. But that is all we're simply doing. And if you look at this like faster way to understand what's going on, when you have the base and the argument are the same, and your argument is being raised to a power, then that is going to be your value. Because another way you can look at this is just by using the power rule of logarithms, right? You can also rewrite this as two times the logarithm base 10 of 10 right? And we know like 10 raised to what number is equal to 10? One, right? So we could simplify this to two times a one. So therefore that's just going to equal two. Hopefully that makes a little sense. And we could have done the same thing with the threes, right? But another reason why I wanted to go ahead and use the tens is because in reality, this actually isn't the most difficult problem to understand. This actually isn't the most where most mistakes happen. The most mistakes actually happen when we have logarithm, it looks like this. Now here's where students really have trouble with this. And again, a lot of times if you know the rule, if you know the rules of logarithms, you know this answer is 72. It's not that hard of a problem. But students make mistakes on this all the time. And again, I think it really stems down to like not having a basic understanding of logarithms or what logarithms represent. Now, in this case, we're actually dealing with an exponential equation. We have a base, which is three, and then our power is actually logarithm. And when we think about like three raised to what number equals 72, like that's not a value, right? We don't have a value or we don't have an integer that we can use to go ahead and represent that. So that's where a lot of students are like, well, there's no number that works for there. So how can I take three, right? Raise it to some number I can't fit. Like how can I evaluate this then if that, if this logarithm doesn't compute? So again, like it goes to our understanding of logarithms, which again, rather than using some variables, let's just go ahead and use some basic numbers to kind of make sense of some things. Okay, now in this example, we have a exponential, right? Or an exponent here. And, but the whole, thankfully, like we can evaluate this because log base 10 of 100, right? As we already figured out, we know that answer is two, right? And therefore we have 10 squared, which is now just going to equal to 100, all right? Now, one thing I like for students to understand like why this property works, right? Is to just go ahead and take an expression like this, which is, this is what we call an exponential equation and to rewrite this as a logarithm, right? Why does 10 raised to the log base 10 of 100 equal 100, right? And you could see like that was kind of quick, just went from there to there. Now again, like we work this out step by step, right? 10 raised to what number equals 100, which is a two, and then 10 squared is 100. But again, remember, we can always rewrite an exponential equation as a logarithmic equation. And that's what I want to kind of show you is like, we can write that as a logarithmic equation. That's gonna show you and you see how that exactly works. So let's go and do that. We have our base, we have our power, and we have what our logarithm is equal to. So I'll take a log base 10, right? Same base as the power, e for the power of the logarithm of our, um, what it's equal to, which is 100, is equal to the log base 10 of 100, which is our power, right? Remember, we take the power and that's equal to the logarithm expression. And of course you can see like, yeah, that's definitely go ahead and work. So what I want you to recognize, and again, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if the, if you can evaluate it or you can't evaluate it. But again, if you have the base of your exponent, 
raised to a logarithm with that same base, then it's just gonna equal the argument. And that's how you can simplify this, even when it looks like it's something that cannot be simplified. Now, if you wanna go and see how to evaluate logarithms when we're dealing with fractions, then go and check out the next video I have for you here.